so that puts sorry. Am I good? Should I go? Yep, whenever you're ready. So that puts <laughs> <laughs> It's Christmas, isn't it? it it's, we do the annual Christmas special. That we... well, well, yeah. I mean, it's annual in that this is the second year that we're doing it. I don't know that if counts we can... as annual. Okay, it's it's happened. It's happening twice. It's the oh. second time that I'm on two or three when it's Christmas. Tr oh, happy! I, I think. happy birthday. <laughs> was it, it wasn't Christmas when you started last year. True. Not, no, it's like... the second Christmas that I'm on two or three. Okay, and right. what we did last year is we got a bit ambitious. And we did the 12 days of Christmas. Like we mm -hmm. did 12 mini episodes, 12 bits of content. So we, we changed it around this time. Uh, and what we decided to do is do the World Cup of features that were, that were released or that went into Chrome this year. So we did 12 last time. Uh, yeah, and we're going to do 32 this time. Great. Brilliant. Let's and, do it. And we're going to find out which one the best is. The best feature of 2018. Yes, arbitrarily just decided. And basically, us. each feature will have its own 10-minute video. Yes, exactly. No, no, <laughs> no. We're going we're to try. We're going to try and keep it short, snappy. Um, and, mm. and one of the things that's going to be really annoying for people is that my jumper has bells on. It's a very Christmassy sound. But I'm also sweating horribly in this jumper, and when I do that, it's just wafting into my it's like face. High quality polyester, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a Primark special. I actually quite like this. <laughs> uh, right. Let's dig in. We want to keep it short. Let's. Let's. Go so on. the first feature that I want to talk about is display contents. OK. And uh, it, this, it's <laughs> that is like the title it. slide, but just you know, with some CSS wrapped around it. It, it is. Uh, it Hi. is well spotted. And, and this, is, this is how it works. What it essentially means is the containing element, pretend it's not there in terms of layout. So if you've got a flex box, mm -hmm. and then inside it, you've got an element that has display contents and that has three children inside it, it will act as if you know, that wrapper element isn't there. They're all part of the flexbox. But in terms of CSS, it's so like to still respect that Absolutely. wrapping yes. element. Yes, so good that's point. Where, the, where the good stuff comes in, because you can write, you can basically encapsulate the elements and style them differently. Yeah. But in terms of layout, they just bubble up. Yes. Kinda. So you might want an element there for semantics, but you want the children <laughs> to be part of a flexbox or a grid. This is, this is how you do it. All right, so facing off against that feature ah. is and the feature that I want to talk about, and it is. Reporting Observer. All right. OK. So Reporting Observer, I'm trying to remember if I, ha I have a code sample for this. So Reporting Observer is, looks like m many of the other observers that we have. It basically gives you a report for any kind of deprecated API that you're using or for interventions that you have triggered. Uh, OK, so this is like when we block document Dot right. You would get an entry in the reporting server describing to you that you have a report dot type intervention. You will get like the description and where in your source got triggered, why it got triggered, like a lot of detail, and then you can decide to send it to your analytics or do something with it. Excellent. So it, I, is it just all of them by default? Is that right, or is there any? It doesn't look like there's much configuration here. No, there's, as far as I know, there's nothing. It's just whenever you use a deprecated API or you trigger an intervention, you will get a report in here. All right. That's it. All right. Okay. So let's uh, we'll, we'll face these off against each other then, and uh, I, I've I've been uh, developing. Uh, I say developing. I went to a website <laughs> that offers this feature already. Challenge.com. Yes, uh, <laughs> and I've set it all up. Uh, oh, like look at yours. Well done. Um, yeah, I did a lot of copy and pasting. So let's let's talk about these two then. Um, I, I, do you have any initial feelings? <sighs> no. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so the thing, I find reporting observer is probably incredibly useful, but only for sites that actually you know go to production and actually work for a business. Because on my hobby sites, my little side projects, I'm not going to care. So display content seems more useful to me as a developer. To a wider set of developers, may, maybe, yeah, reporting observer is going to be more useful to like big big companies and that businesses. track these things. Not even big companies, just businesses, right? Do you know what? I am going to agree with you. All right, we're gonna, we're so gonna we're going to declare display contents the winner yes. of the first round of the Christmas 2018-203 World Cup of what features? Oh, that was good. <laughs> I, I imagined you regretted starting that sentence <laughs> as you went through it. So we now see in the next bracket, we will face it off against so, something else. Something else, something which else. is totally not on screen right now. Not on screen. Yeah, there's a bit of spoilers there. But, uh, spoiler alert. Let's so see. that is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about. Scroll snap. Mm, scroll snap. I got one. Yep. Uh, so it looks like this. Uh, here we go. I've, I, it's a great feature. I really dislike how we did it in CSS. It's. Oh. I, what, I, I'm what not really you... dislike. I find it really 
hard to have an intuition for it. Like, I have to look it up and see what X mandatory? Like, what is mm. mandatory about this? You know, and then scroll snap a line. Like, I get it. Like, I, once I've read it, I understand why we need all these options. But in terms of the choice of words, it feels it feels alien a little bit, but that's fine. It's a good feature to have. It's an important feature to it's, have. It's a nice, it is a high level feature. Yeah. Um, I, I, let's let's actually demo what it does. <laughs> so you can see here the element is always sort of appearing in the middle, uh, even if I try to make it not do that. Uh, yeah. And this is essentially what this is like the does. standard gallery example, right? Like yeah. the carousel where you like you want to really center on the image. Oh, it's a big element. I yes. like it. So it handles that as well. I, I imagine it would be useful for it, like. On Twitter, where you have like a, a, a list, but you want to swipe horizontally onto a different kind of the list. Different panels, yeah. That's a, a, a very yeah. common native design layout, I think. And on web, it was always hard to do it. So this brings you that, which yeah. is pretty cool. So facing off, I already forgot what was on the bracket, but oh, side isolation. It doesn't have oh. a code sample because that's literally <clears throat> it doesn't affect how you write code really at all. And it's a security feature more for the end develop uh, end user of browsers. Right. And now you can actually correct it because you know more about site isolation than I do. But um, as far as I know, like you don't write code differently, except maybe an HTTP header that you add to opt into an even stronger site isolation. But that's all that it really changes. But it is a good or really important security feature in yeah. that there is uh, our, it is our tool against Spectre and Meltdown. Yes, I exactly. The idea of, of every separate site should live in its own process. It's something that kind of happened in Chrome 1. <laughs> um, but it didn't quite happen with iframes. Yeah. That you'd end up with multiple sites in the same And process. as a side remark, because of this, we now have out of process iframes or UPIFs. UPIFs. Right? That's yep. like a side product. And UPIFs are actually, in a way, a performance primitive because it blocks iframes from affecting the performance of the top level site. Absolutely. And you can actually abuse that to um, build little performance containers and run multiple things in parallel without affecting the top level site. As long as all the other browsers do it, which, which, yeah, which they, they don't. Well, but they are going to. They're working uh, on it. It's interesting that this is not just a Chrome thing. It's uh, Chrome has shown that this is the right thing to do yeah. uh, security-wise. It's the only sensible thing to do in a meltdown inspector world. Exactly, exactly. Well, um, this, is, this is a hard choice. I, like, I mean, we have to kind of define what we're looking for, the best feature, best developer feature. Um, so and these are actually two really good features. Yeah, because so, so we're talking about a CSS feature that People have wanted for for ages. Yeah, it's a, a really nice high level feature with you know great performance and yeah. all that. And we're facing it off against what is saving people from being hacked and <laughs> losing their data. Yeah, I'm going to go with cross net points. Are you? <laughs> yes, but that's because I'm. I feel like this is you know a web development show, and I kind of like it's what developers will care yeah. more about. And because um, like it doesn't affect development. Pretty much at all site isolation. It's just it's it's we need it. It's important, but it's just something that we need in the browser. There's nothing a developer can do, yes, or can enhance. So it's it. not really a developer facing feature. So yeah. we could maybe like disqualify it on those grounds. Pretty much agreed. Look at that. We have the first second round face off. Exactly. Okay. So we've got here display contents versus That's an easy one, stuff. honestly. Really? So, yeah. I'm. I'm. I like display contents, but it's not that exciting. I don't need it that often. Scroll snaps, however. I've wanted display contents quite a bit, and I feel like I've sometimes broken HTML semantics because it wasn't there, because I, I couldn't put the correct wrapper around something because I wanted it to be in the flex box yeah, of the other okay, things. Good. I guess I'm, I have a very low threshold on break, breaking semantic markup, honestly. But scroll snap is quite snazzy, isn't it? It is very snazzy. It looks fancy. It looks fancy. Should we put it through? I, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. All right, OK. I'm putting scroll snap through. This is, this is a decision being made. There we go. Will it update? This is like a little mini game. Ooh, there we go. Animated, like, it's lovely, isn't well it? Well done. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're going done. back. Uh, your turn. My turn. I would like to talk about named workers. This is a big hitter. <laughs> Are you ready? I am. Um, Are you ready? Show, show me the syntax. Strap in. It's a worker with a name. Yeah. Who could have predicted this happening? What does this name do? Um, nothing. No, <laughs> no, it, it, no, it does do things. It will um, improve things like stack traces. It will improve things like dev tools. Like if you, especially if you've got so multiple it. instances of the same uh, okay. URL, mm -hmm. it, it's a way to differentiate them. All right. No, that's it. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> I think maybe. Uh, all think right. It is a feature. What, what do we pitch in against it? Payment handler. Right. Um, disclaimer, okay. 
I, I literally had not looked into a payment request and payment handler, which are interacting with each other. And th this is not my territory. This is AG. And AG would know all about it and would get super excited. That's our colleague AG. And I don't, I, I have never done pay, like, never written a store on the web or maintained one or had my living depend on it. So I'm guessing many people are excited. But I, I actually didn't get it to work. Either way, so here's roughly how it works. And it might be wrong a little bit. OK, OK. So you can do payment requests on the web, yes. request a payment. And then the browser basically intervenes like, hey, I'm going to do like a very trusted UI that do you don't write. But the browser actually has built in. And you can select your credit cards or uh, pay with Google or with uh, Apple Pay, yes. all these things. Um, but what if I want to pay with Soma's totally legit bank? I, I, I don't. <laughs> it sounds really suspicious. But I do, because okay. it's totally legit. OK, excellent. Yep. Um, and that is what Payments re Handler allow you to do. Like, you can now write your own payment handler and basically hook into this machinery in the browser. So this is, this is uh, rather than, so this, this allows someone like PayPal to do yeah. this without. I'm guessing PayPal is popular enough to already be built into most browsers, for example. But this would allow the more niche sites, maybe some Bitcoin sites or cryptocurrencies, to you know, do these kind of payments. Right. And the way it works is that basically uh, you take the service worker and you register a payment handler. And you set your, your um, domain and your clear name and your method. I'm not quite sure what the difference between the first key and the method name is, but okay. that's its code from more or less the, the guide. And then you have a new payment request handler. Right. And basically, what you do in here, in all the samples I've seen, you do a very long running um, respond with handler, where you launch a new window and guide the user through your own payment flow, and then you resolve the problems. And you say, like, yep, the person has paid, and now the other side can. And that can paid. include bits of UI, if, if all necessary, these things. Or not. Yeah. So this is obviously super hand wavy because I didn't fully understand it in the mm -hmm. short time that I tried to read everything up. But this is kind of like a big step towards you know, making all of these payment infrastructures more open on the web. And everybody can you know, hook into that. Fair enough. Um, let's uh, have a look at the, the board for this. Now, what we're doing here is we're, we're facing off payment handlers, which is really brings the web up to par with what native can yeah, do. pretty much. And obviously, payments are a huge part of the web. We're facing that off against workers <laughs> with a name. <laughs> Um, yeah. Should I just should I put payment handlers? Yeah, through? let's okay. put payment handlers too. Because um, let's be honest, the named workers are. The, I mean, we, we we have to stress here that we're not like um, diminishing any any features that people have worked on. These are no. all important things. It's great yeah. to have all of these on the platform. They they became part of the platform for a reason. Um, but I just think payment handlers are a bit bigger. <laughs> Some <laughs> features are bigger than others, and that's okay. Excellent. Payment handlers has won this round. Yep. So let's Excellent see stuff. what will be pitched against in round two. Now, if you notice something different here. Oh, it's a nice background. It's a nice background, because I want to talk about conic gradients. Is it uh, conic or conic? Because yes. It, comes from it, is, it is one of those. <laughs> I thought it was conic. I don't know. Conic. I mean, I'm the, I, I don't, you know. I'm from the north. I can't speak English either. <laughs> so. <laughs> so great. OK. Um, this, this is. This I mean, is the syntax like. is probably well known by everyone because everybody wanted to have this feature for I don't know how many decades. Y and yes. Now it's finally shipped. Now we have custom paint. We could have implemented it ourselves. Now it's shipped in Chrome. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. It's, it's yeah. That's all I want to say about it. Literally beautiful. Excellent. Um, and I'm pitching against AV1 decoding. Oh, triangle, triangle one decoding. I thought we might. I thought I'd give it a fancy font because I thought it would be it nice. Looks good mostly, but this is, I guess, a corner case where. It Kind of unreadable. It's not very nice. No, it's not. <laughs> OK. So everyone is a uh, upcoming being worked on, I think, almost stable at this point, video codec that is completely yes. free and open. Anybody can use it, no royalties. And it is extremely impressive in how efficient it is. Yes. Um, and so Chrome now has support for it. And it's, and it's all open source. As well, yeah, the it's like a collaboration the decoders, between Apple, everything. And, uh, everyone. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a committee around it and everything. That said, I think so. Chrome does support it, but obviously we now need hardware to decode it faster, right? Which right. most hardware doesn't have because it's just been standardized, so it's not been put into hardware. And because of the complexity, it's actually quite. Yeah. it's difficult. Well, it'd be I a battery if you can problem put it like with, with like GP GPU, like use the GPU to decode it. Oh, with, I see. But I don't, I don't know how that works. That is, it's not my territory. I am quite excited about the format. Um, but I haven't played around with it much because it's just so new. Right. Well, thanks for doing some research. Um, sorry. <laughs> that was. <laughs> thanks for coming. Get out of here. <laughs> You're going to throw that back at me in some of the future things. Uh, 
I think this is quite a... It's another tough one, because we're once again facing off quite a high-level feature that developers have been wanting for ages, mm. with a huge leap forward in not only open standards, but, but in video technology. <sighs> yeah, so my... I personally am going to side with Conic, Conic Gradients. Conic Gradients. Conic okay. gradients. Conic. Um, I, they, I think I, people are going to use it more. Format adoption is always a hassle. It's always so like I, I, YouTube's going to adopt it straight up, sure, and then yes. detect if your browser supports it and then ship that. Great. But for me as a developer, it's cool, but then it's going to take probably ages again for browsers to adopt it. I mean, WebP was open as well, and it took such a long time for other browsers to adopt it. Yeah. I know there was it's more details and more nuances to the story. Absolutely. Um, but on I, I'll believe it when I see it. It's my stance on AV1, while conic gradients are something that I use would have used a lot in I, a lot I, of I, websites. I think that's right. I think once AV1 lands, I mean, when I do video stuff on the web, I tend to just dump it on YouTube or some yeah, or Vimeo or some much. similar service. Yeah. I don't have a lot of contact with the codec. So I think what is more, what I would encounter more is Conic Gradients. So uh, let's put that through. Okie dokie. Right, and there it goes. Thanks for pushing the button. No problem, no problem. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. Wait, should we do the, the, the theme magic matchup? Oh, you, you, yes, we should. <laughs> exactly. Oh, we've got a couple of rounds to Oh, we're we? we rippling up. So we're now facing off Payment Handler with Koenig. Oh, that feels so unfair. Gradients. That feels really unfair to be, like payment handler seems like really hard and long standing standards work. And it's it is one of those things that is going to like so many things are leaving the web because yeah. payments is harder on the web than it is on native. And this brings them back. In that sense, it's so crucial for the web to survive to have these kind of things there. On the other hand, no one's made money from conic gradients. No, but I'm still more excited about them. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I, I am going to agree with you using the to consistent logic of what we did before. Payment handler is something that a few web developers are going to use. Yeah. Um, I mean, in that case, it's actually the even more niche version of payment handlers. It's not even payment request. That is a good point. It's payment handlers. Right. Right. Oh, so right. we're going to go with right. conic gradients. Right. right. I'm going to I'm going to press the button uh, for conic conic. I'm pretty sure it's conic, uh, but conic gradients. And, you and know so what? we end up with two CSS features in the next round. And we can face these two off as well. So I, I, I'm i going to give it to Scroll Snap. I just think I it's going to be useful. Straight more. up agree. It's, um, it's visual. Like Conic Gradients, we can, you could usually solve with an SVG background image. There's many workarounds that are just as efficient. You could use we Canvas if necessary. Canvas, CSS Paint, there's many things. Scroll Snap, it's always has been main thread bound and weird, ugly JavaScript. You have to do all the velocity and physics implementation that the operating system usually already has. It is such a big tool for web developers. Sold. Right. Yes. So that puts Scroll Snap into the semi-finals. Interesting. So I think I think we should stop there. Yeah, and keep the rest for the next episode. For another episode. Payments is something that a few well developed. Conic gradients is something. Payment handler is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for speaking English. Give it. Shall I try that again? I reckon.